at Sharp Clark NFL, and he does a 16-part thread, the upside case for Justin Fields, a thread on why I can't join the masses fading the Bears after watching every snap of his rookie season. Now, this was a this was a very detailed and you know, Sharp Clark, if you're watching DeWindy, I have not I did not know about you until today. I am now one of your followers and appreciate your football knowledge. But basically what he did was he outlined that okay, Justin Fields is flat footed in the pocket and he's late and it doesn't look good. In fact, it looks terrible. Um so but the positive but- is when he's out of the pocket, he looks fantastic. And he shows that he can put balls where only wide receivers, tight ends can catch them, and that there is a skill set that can be built around with a good coaching staff. So I'm like, this is, I I thought, a really excellent breakdown of what is possible if he is actually coached correctly. So um, I don't know. I I know that you're on the train. You were you're riding the, to the fields, choo choo. But I thought I, I know you're still on the platform. Yeah, and it's yeah, well, I, I am. But, but in training camps coming up, or good to see you, Candace. Thanks so much for jumping Thank in Candace. here. Uh, he he lays out two seasons that you know uh, one elite quarterback and one not so elite quarterback had. Let's start with an elite quarterback, an MVP in 2019. Lamar Jackson went 14 and two. Okay. The, the Ravens went 14 and two. He threw for 3,127 yards. He ran for 1206, which was tops on the team ahead of Mark, ahead of Gus Edwards. His leading receiver was Mark Edwards. The tight end was 64 catches followed by Marquise Brown with 46. Not, you know, not huge numbers from a wide receiver. And then if you're going to go le- – okay, fine, he's, he's, he's not Lamar Jackson. Jalen Hurts last year, same deal, 9-8. and eight. P- Bears fans, I think we'd be happy if we got to 9-8. and eight. Hurts, 3,100 yards passing, 784 rushing. Again, the same formula, leading – you know, not a ton of yards, leading rusher on the team, ahead of Mike Sanders, ahead of Jordan Howard. And his best receiver uh, caught 64 balls, Devontae Smith. And then you had Dallas Goddard. So – uh, and, and they were nine and eight. So better defenses, sure. But I, I, I actually, I thought this was a, a, a decent layout. That well, he, you know, Lamar Jackson wasn't, you know, Patrick Mahomes throwing the football. He, they, they had a formula for how to win. I don't know if Luke Getzky can do this, but I, I'm starting to get excited here, Herb. That's where I'm at. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of ways to win football games, Carl. There just is, and everybody doesn't have to be the same. There it doesn't have to be. I know we have this idea in our mind of what a what a starting quarterback in the NFL should look like, and what his footwork should look like, and what his throwing motion should look like. And anytime somebody deviates from that, they have an elongated throwing motion. I understand the pros and the cons of all those things. I get it. What I'm saying is, you can still win games even if your quarterback isn't Peyton Manning esque or Tom Brady esque. You just have to understand what he does well and then allow him to do those things. And those things may require less of a supporting cast than your prototypical quarterback because they can create, because they can make plays on their own with their feet. And for whatever reason, they seem to be much more comfortable throwing on the run. Some of those throws that Justin made on the run were absolutely ridiculous throws across the body, back, like ridiculous throws. And if that's where he throws best, then get him out of the pocket and let him do it. Right, and this does not – it's not rocket science. This is what he does best. So you would think that – I mean, Luke Getzey's not walking around Lake Forest right now thinking, well, how the hell are we going to use this guy? No, this is exactly how we're going to use this guy. This is what he does best. We're going to build off of that. And by the way, I want the Bears to win football games. That would make for a fun season. It would Look. suck if if, if, if if field sucks and the, and the defense sucks and they win no games, but then, okay, fine, you're going to have a really high draft pick and a ton of money, so that would be interesting. But, let's, but the bigger deal to me is figuring out how he's going to play and be successful, not just this coming year, but going forward. Like having an actual formula where he, when his head hits the pillow at night, he knows that these guys understand me, they're going to get the best out of me, and this is where – I feel comfortable and how I can go from here and, and get to whatever my capabilities are in the NFL. So it's not just about winning games this year. It's just about him get, getting him comfortable, period. 
Yeah, it's about getting him acclimated into the way that he has to be for the Bears to be successful. And again, that can look any one of a myriad of ways, and it's fine. It does not have to look the same as every other quarterback. It can look completely different. It can look similar to the examples that you just gave. Like, it, it can be whatever it takes to win games, and you just put him in that system and let him do it. And so if he's going to be booting outside, it's going to be a lot of play action, all those types of things, cool. Let him do those things, and you can still win games that way. You can still keep the chains moving, which is all the Bears need to be able to do. But if they establish that this year, even if you're talking about nine wins as a ceiling for the Bears, which I certainly think is the ceiling for the Bears this year, if you establish this is how we can win football games and Justin gets really, really comfortable in it, and then he comes back year two and gets his system, now you've got something that you can really build with and work on. Yeah, so I'm just – I'm putting up these the, – some of the clips here. I'm looking for exactly the one that I want here. Um, there's one oh, – okay. This – this was an interesting one. Finally, his poor mechanics led to inaccuracy from the pocket. He had the second highest bad throw percentage on the season. It's hard to throw consistently with good timing when receivers are moving, and so he missed a lot of easy throws. I think people kind of forget that part. But then he gets to eventually uh, this one. When he can roll out and shrink the field, good things happen. Look at him straight up beat Nick Bosa to the edge. I don't have the video for you, but here you go. You can see there's Bosa, there's Fields. Uh, you know, at the 40-yard line, he's, he's about to beat him. And then he writes, that's Nick Bosa, and he made him look slow. Like, like that just popped for me. Like, okay, there's an elite dude. He's beating him to the short side of the field. He's picking up, a ch- you know, 10, 15 yards, and, and the offense all of a sudden looks a whole lot better. And we were, how much were we screaming last year? Get him out of the pocket. Get him out of the pocket. And they just didn't do it. So, I mean – Listen, if you, got, if you got a Ferrari, you drive it like a Ferrari, right? You don't. Right. It doesn't have to be a minivan. Shout out to minivans. They're safe. You can fit a lot of people in them. Gets us where we're going. It's all good, right? It's not as not nearly as dangerous as a Ferrari. But if you have the Ferrari, don't try to put six soccer players in the back and drive forty miles an hour at ten and two. Right, and he might not be a Ferrari. He might be a Miata. He might be an old school Toyota Celica, but still, you don't drive the Celica like the like the like the the minivan. I love a shout out to minivans. Actually, no shout out to minivans. Minivans are terrible. Oh my uh, god, I drove one in high school, man. I was supposed to have a Monte Carlo. Like my brother had a Monte Carlo, and so my brother went to go to college. He couldn't take his car his first year. I'm like, I get to drive the MC to school every day. That, my mom right. wrecked the MC while I was still on my permit. I'm like, why oh. did you? And then I and then I was stuck with the minivan. It got you around, but it it, it, it it's not the same. It's not the same it, as the Monte Carlo. Uh, it did no, have that, its perks, though. We'll, that's all we'll say about that. Yeah, I was gonna say there are some options with the minivan that could have been <laughs> great for a young Herb Howard. We don't have to talk about that today, but congratulations, because uh, you just alluded to it. I'm very proud of you. I was not doing that in my high school career uh, with a minivan <laughs> or, or 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 anything, but you know. You got a little better at college. You know, we, we turned it around at Iowa. Thank you. Thank you, Hawkeyes. There we but, go. All right. I want to give you what I thought was a great quote from our former bear, the dude who came to rescue us last year, uh, Jason Peters off his fishing boat. He was on Sirius XM NFL. He's talking about fields. And he says this, once he gets the offensive line set, that guy is going to be special. He can throw, he can run, he can make all the plays he needs to make. So what I love about that from Peters, he's not on the team anymore. He doesn't need to be saying nice things. So when you've got uh, different dudes who, who, who are wanting to move up the depth chart, saying that he's the GOAT on Instagram, Offensive lineman Davenport, you know that 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 doesn't ring as true as a as a vet who's gone and and doesn't have much. You know he he could easily said he's got a chance to be really good. That's not what he said. He went he went a lot further than that. So I thought it was I, I, hey okay Jason Peters I, I I like what you're doing. And this is a guy who's seen a lot of football. This is a guy who's seen a lot of football, a lot of different yeah. quarterbacks. He knows what it, he knows what he's talking about. And think that his ceiling is that high and he far to he, like you said he could have just casually said you know i think the kids got talent and i'm excited to see what comes he was like no he's going to be special like to me that means something from a, a, a probable future hall of famer yeah uh and i and i buy it too like look he can make all the plays 
he just and his pocket stuff. Uh, it I would I'd like to think. Let's be optimistic here, but uh, it can get better, right? Uh, that's not something that you can't teach some dude that hey beat beat Joey Bosa and Nick Bosa off the edge here. Just just go do that. <laughs> You're not teaching that. Hey man, be more on your tiptoes. Be 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 quicker. All that stuff. You 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 can do that. 